Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the podcast series for beginner web developers and general web enthusiasts. Now, introducing your show hosts Michael Budd, Fraser Hart, Lewis Keynes, and Ed Mann. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Free Devs and the Maybe. We have a very, very special podcast this week because one of our founding members is back home in One Piece alive, Mr. Fraser Hart. How are you doing? Woo. Hello, I'm very well. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm very good. Uh, the other boring guest, not guest, just co-host is Ed Man. What's up? What's up? like it. And I'm a very special friend of the show. I always say special friend of the show. He doesn't listen to the show, but uh, we of love him nonetheless. Do. <laughs> I listened to it. I listened to it all afternoon today. Did you? No did lie. You? I did. You tweeted you. about it today as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah it was good. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. loving it. I'm so. loving it. Oh wow! I'll check that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Justin Delucia uh, needs no introduction, mm. but I'll give him one anyway. He's uh, a, a designer that we all used to work with, and Fraser still works with, and uh, uh, also has his uh, does his own work on the side as well. I think this this podcast is going to be very informal we're just hopefully going to uh, answer a lot of the questions that we've had in over the last few weeks so i'm going to tackle those and i believe quite a few of them are design based which is why we've got justin on the show as, as well as wanting to hear from him so uh awesome. we'll do that in a bit but um yeah fraser as many people will know if you listen to the podcast fraser has been on a bit of a mad adventure uh which... we actually got a tweet today didn't we ask him where is fraser did we? Yeah. I know that, I think that's the first, first time any of the fans have actually interacted with, say fans, the listeners. Um, that was such oh, a big edit. Millions and millions. Yeah. <laughs> the screaming fans. Where's that hot one? <laughs> <laughs> with a big nose. Uh, yeah. So, so I just head over to you, Fraser. Do you want to, uh, tell us what happened? Uh, yeah, basically for, for people that, that have listened before, you've maybe heard me mention about this little kind of expedition that I'd been planning for, for the last 18 months, which was supposed to be a, a, a rowing race from Monterey in California to Honolulu in Hawaii. Um, we were supposed to be at sea for f- somewhere in the region of about 40 odd days. And we made it about three days before we had to get picked up by a helicopter out of the middle of one. Well, I was going to say out of the middle of the Pacific off the coast of California. Um, yeah, basically our, our boat started taking on water. Um, and then, yeah, the situation got worse and worse and worse until it kind of got to a point where the boat was pretty much under the water and we were physically able to, to row it. So yeah, we had to, we had to get off the boat and initially we were going to get taken off by, by a support yacht. Um, but the, the weather conditions were so bad, so we they had to get the Coast Guard in to take us off in a helicopter at 3 o'clock in the morning. So Very scary? <laughs> Just a little bit? Um, yeah. It wasn't actually scary. No, like, it's, oh, it's probably going to sound really big, but yeah, we weren't I scared at all. No, like, you know, yeah, no, it was <laughs> fine, because it was, no, it, was like a, it was a really kind of gradual process from, from the start. Like We started taking on water like halfway through the second day, um, or we noticed that we were taking on water halfway through the second day. And then from that point on, it kind of, it got progressively worse and worse and worse. So it was kind of, it was, it was never, it was never, oh, everything's fine. Oh, everything's, everything's gone wrong. It was kind of like, yeah, it was, it was just a gradual progression. So we had water going into a couple of the hatches on or what was supposed to be watertight hatches on the deck, which housed our water maker, which is the thing that was going to turn seawater into fresh drinking water. Um, and then that was on the second day that we noticed that. And then we kind of bailed that out. Uh, um, and then very quickly that filled up with water again. Um, and then in the weather conditions that we were having, it was like big seas and high winds and stuff. So we decided to, to kind of just put the parachute anchor out for, for the night and then all kind of get inside the cabin and, and kind of hide from the storm during the, during the night and then kind of address the situation. Um, and when the morning came around, we'd taken a lot more water. Um, during the night, we'd kind of that we'd walk come to the cabin as well. All the all the the, the cabin was like a, a a single a single level with cushions on top of it, and all the cushions were sodden like sodden through. Oh. Um, yeah, we had a build pump. So in the in the morning, we kind of we kind of regrouped and, and started addressing the situation a bit more. And it was kind of yeah, okay. We have got a lot of water coming into the boat, so we were we were using our bilge pumps, which were electric, which were taking a lot of the water out. But we'd bilge for for ten fifteen minutes, and five minutes later, it'd be full of water again. Um. So yeah, we had, we had some, some stuff that we could have done repairs with. We had putty and we had some sealant and what have you. So we used all of the, all of the sealant and all the putty that we had to pitch up, patch up the leaks that we could find. Um, and water was still coming in and still coming in. And because we'd been running, we were running off, off essentially two car batteries, which were getting regenerated by, by, by the sun with solar panels. Um, so we burnt out all our power. Um, so we were unable to, to, to bilge anymore. 
uh, water then got into the electrics, so the electrics went completely short anyway. So they were they were out no matter how much sunlight and how much power we had. Um, and then water just carried on coming in and coming in and coming in. Um, yeah, and it kind of sort of early on in in the second day, we'd we'd radioed for for help for the the race support yacht. Basically saying, look, we've got a leak. We want to we want get we want to get some more sealant because we've used all our sealant up. So they dispatched a the support yacht out to us, and that was there like eight hours later. Um, and by the time the support yacht had got to us, we were we were in a, a situation where we, it was too far gone to to seal anything up anyway. So we were saying, okay, well, can we have a tow back? Because we were, I think we were like eighty miles offshore at this time. So we kind of said to them, look, can we have a tow back to shore? Um, and then we can kind of patch up for a couple of days on shore and then go out and we won't be a part of the race anymore, but we can still get a Pacific crossing under a belt. Um, but the seas were too rough to, to even attempt to, a, a tow at that stage. And then, yeah, things got worse and worse and worse. And yeah, by the time we left the boat at four o'clock at three or four o'clock in the morning, like the whole deck was under the water. The, the aft cabin was kind of, was submerged and, and kind of thigh deep in water in the aft cabin. Um, and the only thing that was, that was kind of, prominently above the water was a four cabin which was still watertight so yeah we kind of left it like that and uh yeah and and here i am back in in the uk a couple of weeks earlier than i planned to be it sounds terrifying to me but i suppose the adrenaline takes over i guess when you're in that situation just yeah i know. think it was it was all very much in control because we had uh, when when so things cool about it like, like oh no because yeah, like, yeah i don't want to have... yeah, i don't want to sound big-headed but it was like it, it wasn't a scary thing at all like it was it, because as soon as we raised the alarm we knew that the support yacht was on its way down and then when the support yacht was there it basically spent the whole time from from the time the support yacht turned up it was circling us until we'd been evacuated by the helicopter so when it was only really kind of around the time the support yacht turned up that we we were in like kind of dire straits but then with the support yacht there it was a, a nice big safety blanket so even if even if the boat had kind of like fallen to the bottom of the sea and we had nothing to kind of even wade on um then yeah, we would have we would have still been would have been alive and, and safe. And then like it, it was the seas were pretty rough, and we, we were unable to get on the support yacht as it as it turned out. Um, and then yeah, as soon as we heard the the coast guard was coming, then it was kind of like yeah, you see a coast guard helicopter on the horizon, and then uh, yeah, and then stuff starts to get a little bit exciting. So were you, what was the overall feeling from like you and your mates, and was it just more disappointment or just yeah? To be honest, devastation because it was like we've we've been we've been planning this for for eighteen months, and it was kind of like everything that I've done for the last eighteen months has been geared towards rowing from California to Hawaii, and we get three days into it, and then the boat goes under the water, and we have to yeah, and we have to kind of quit this thing that we've we've kind of single like just been focusing on solidly like it's been a it's yeah. been a full-time job just getting to the start line so i'd go to work like i'd be getting up at six o'clock in the morning to go and train for it and then i'd go to work in the office and then come back from the office and I'd be straight on my computer at home kind of like tapping out emails and just doing admin for the row even just trying to get us to the start line and it just kind of feels like all that and then all, all the money that we've thrown at it as well because it's, it's not been a cheap thing for any of us um we've all yeah. taken on quite a considerable amount of debt to to get to the start line um and uh, yeah, just kind of to to realise that all of that was not not in vain because we had a like even even with with what happened, it was a hugely hugely positive experience. But to not get the goal that we've been kind of single mindedly aiming for for the last eighteen months is a bit of a kick in the balls, to be honest. Yeah, I can understand that, man. Oh, well, it's a good job you're safe though. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been good, and it has been it has been positive. Like it's been a, it's been a good time. It's not been the experience we set out for, but are you yeah, planning like, on doing it in a couple of years, maybe? Or uh, we've we've definitely talked about it, and it's something that I desperately want to do. Yeah. Um, the the big kind of question is is the finance though. If if we can find a way of doing it under some kind of sponsorship, then a hundred percent yes. Um, but if it's something that we're going to have to self fund again, then yeah it's, it's a it's a harder question to answer because yeah it, it's it's kind of crippling me financially um so three devs and a maybe universe <laughs> <laughs> go for it absolutely Let's Send us <laughs> um yeah, but yeah no it's, it's been good like it's been it's not the experience we set out for but we've had a bit of a dust like been been like off the back of it <laughs> rather, yeah rather so what did you get up to once you got back onto land then like other than the yeah. first couple of days probably just thinking wow what has happened yeah, it kind of got recovered, and then me and because uh, it was four of us on the boat, so two of us went to Vegas for a few days, um, and the other two guys rented a van to do a surf trip down the California coast. Um, and then after Vegas, I went and met up with the guys in the van, um, and then the other guy I went to Vegas with flew home, and then yeah, kind of went down into Mexico for a few days, up to where did I go after that? Yeah, back up to California, spent a bit of time in San Diego, went up to San Francisco to see a friend up there, and then went into Yosemite. Uh, for a couple of days, did a bit of hiking, and then uh, yeah, came back. 
Sweet. Well, that's that not awesome. too bad. Absolutely, yeah. And first day back in the office yesterday, so Justin got to see my face for the first time in, in a couple oh, of months. And I, yeah, that was a tough one. It was one. tears of joy. Not beautiful. just your face. <laughs> <laughs> His heart, too. Um, I, I, I hear there's a little story about your journey back and something about being dropped off and McDonald's and all that. I, I don't think I got that part. Oh, did you not? Okay. Uh, yeah, when we got picked up by the helicopter, um, they only had enough fuel for, for... There was four of us on the boat. They only had enough fuel to, to pick up three. Um, so I, I kind of put my hand up and said, cause I, I, I was in, in a good, in a good way. So I kind of put my hand up and said, I'm, I'm happy to stay behind you three go. So they went up first in the helicopter. Uh, one of the guys was kind of like borderline hypothermic because he couldn't get into his survival suit because he got full water. Um, so those three went up first and they got to come back to a town on the California coast called San Luis Obispo. Um, and they got kind of dropped off at this, at this private airport. And like, as soon as they landed, they were given like clean clothes and they were allowed to go and have a shower. Um, and, uh, yeah, they were like given food and kind of like, here's a sofa to go and sleep on. So they were, they were all sorted. And then, yeah, like two hours later, the helicopter came back for me. I, I wasn't on the boat by myself. I was with the, the rescue diver. So me and him were sat on the boat for two hours waiting for the boat to, waiting for the helicopter to go back to land to drop those guys off, refuel and then come back out for us. Good conversation. So we, Just like, hey, there, how, how's it going? Uh, that's the thing. It was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was really pissed off obviously because of everything that had happened. So I wasn't exactly in the, uh, the best frame of mind to make small talk, but it was kind of like, so, uh, how long have you been in the Coast Guard <laughs> <Yeah>. for? <laughs> yeah. Oh, me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, you, you do many rescues, <laughs> like just whatever you can think to ask about some of that situation. And then I kind of got bored of talking, so I was just like kind of sat there in a bit of a huff for uh, for about an hour of it. But um, but yeah, so the, the helicopter comes back for me, and then rather than take me to this wonderful airport where I was going to get food and like fresh clothes and a shower and somewhere to sleep and stuff, like with the other guys, like the people that like I'd been on this thing with, I get taken to another town which is like Monterey, which was where we'd actually set off from in the first place. Um, and that was about an hour and a half drive north of where the other guys had been dropped off. So it's like four, four thirty in the morning. By the time we get to, to Monterey, the helicopter lands on the thing, the pilot and the divers and everyone starts getting out of the helicopter. I just kind of follow suit and, and walk out. Like, bear in mind, I'm wearing like a bright orange survival suit with like, it's got like lobster claws on your hands and you've got like big boots on and stuff. So I kind of follow, follow them out and I'm like, so do I need to sign anything? And they're like, no, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like, uh, okay, it's like half four. Not sure where I am and I'm dressed up like a, um, so like, <laughs> I had, uh, I had a couple of bags and stuff. So I had, I had my grab bag, which had yeah, my what wallet. Did you, what were you able to keep? Like, did you, were you able to grab as much as possible or did you get everything? Yeah. I mean, we, we'd thrown much, most of the, most of our possessions away before we did the, the row, the row anyway. Um, so I had like wallets, I had like my camera equipment and I had my phone and my wallet and passport and like a pair of swimming shorts and a t-shirt. So I went into the toilets at the airport, kind of changed into a pair of shorts and shirt. And, uh, and luckily at the airport that was going back into Monterey. So he's like, oh, I'll give you a list if you want, which was great for me. He's like, oh, where do you want to go? And I'm like, uh, I'm not too sure. Like, <laughs> I'll oh, just take me to the yacht club because the yacht club was where kind of race, race headquarters was. So I was like, I'll oh, just take me to the, take me to the yacht club and I can sit outside there until someone turns up at nine or 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Um, but as we were driving into, into Monterey, I saw a, like a 24 hour McDonald's. I was like, I'll go in there. There'll be Wi-Fi and, and stuff. So I can at least amuse myself. So <laughs> bear in mind, I left my, I'd left my shoes on the boat as well. So I had no shoes on. I had two bin bags, like one had my survival suit in and the other had all like my possessions in. And, uh, yeah, like kind of walk into McDonald's at half four in the, like half four, five o'clock in the you're morning. You're probably the like, most sane person they've seen all night. Absolutely. But yeah. yeah. But like pair of shorts, t shirt, like no shoes on and two bin bags. Oh, like dude. just looking <laughs> scrubby, stinking because I haven't had a shower or wash for three days because I've been on the boat. And, uh, yeah, Please so tell kind me of like they sat- asked you what happened. No, not at all. Oh. Like I went and I ordered, a, I ordered a breakfast, which was, which was pretty cool. And then sat down, sent the, sent the race organizer a text message basically saying, Look, I'm in McDonald's. I'll see you at the yacht club when you get there. But he he was luckily awake. He'd been coordinating everything with with the the rescue and keeping family and friends and stuff in 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 touch and and letting them know what was going on. So he he was awake at that time. So he luckily he came down and and picked me up and gave me a lift and and kind of yeah, I was able to have a shower at his house and and have a bit of a sleep. And then his wife drove me down to down the coast to St. Louis to, to see the other guys and, and we went from there. And then found out how good they had it and you're just like, why oh, did I choose? So why brilliant. did I choose to go last? <laughs> yeah, I sent a message to them from McDonald's basically saying, I'll just let you know, I'm back in Monterey because um, I, I'd, I'd been told by the pilot they were in St. Louis um, and I basically yeah, sent them a message saying, oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back up in Monterey. Um, 
Yeah, and like one of the messages I got back was, "I don't want to tell you what's been happening because we've had it so good." <laughs> like, <laughs> they got like free, t- yeah, they were given like free T-shirts and, and just yeah, insane. But uh, yeah, so after that, uh, yeah, after then, then the rest of it all, all happened. So it was it, it was it was good fun. Oh, nice man. Uh, yeah. anyone but anyway, what about just... you guys? What have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say. Uh... For anyone who just tuned in, this is like your first ever episode of uh, Free Devs and Maybe. We do usually talk about web development, but uh, we haven't kind of spoken to each other for a while, so uh, unlucky. But um, yeah, Justin, <laughs> our special guest today, uh, has, has recently found out he's going to be a dad. I say recently. When did you find out? Uh, quite a long time ago. <laughs> ago. The baby's <laughs> four years old now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fact, not mine. <laughs> DNA test. It's not long now to the G-Day. <laughs> <laughs> when is the due date? Uh, end of September. Well, I mean, wow. They, they say due date. It yeah. doesn't necessarily mean it will come then, but or, or D Day, but D Day yeah. exactly. Armageddon. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. How are you feeling about it all? Good. I'm. I'm really excited. Actually, I'm. I'm getting yeah. really excited. Yeah, uh, it's a great feeling. We like the house is slowly filling up with very very scary things. Yeah, like prams and nappies and all sorts. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you had no, your? It's good. Have you had your antidotal training yet? Or? Oh man! Uh, we got that to come. I think. I think that's oh. up next. Yeah. Fraser, do you just want to log off, right? And Enjoy you that, just man. do a po- podcast on antinatal for web developers. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ruin this for you. But basically, you can pick some really special. I'm thinking maybe Fraser or something. But basically, yeah. you can give him like your baby's placenta to eat. It's like a real uh-huh. like like a gift. Oh, yeah. Right. It's really, really what? good for you, apparently. It's like full of like vitamins and yeah. So it's really only mammals oh. that don't eat baby placenta. We, we <laughs> surely isn't we it just like, uh... isn't it egg white? Egg white. Uh, uh, I think it's like, apparently it's like liver. Oh, well, that same man. sort of texture and taste. So, it's, uh... it's basically like the, the baby's survival pack. It's yeah. what connects the baby it's, to the mum. It's so amazing, ev- actually. Everything right. goes through it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. so we, we do this thing at work okay. uh, called, called Food Day Friday. <laughs> where, <laughs> we all choose a theme and then we bring in related food and share it. Oh, <laughs> so, for Santa so we could do Placenta yes. Friday. <laughs> I, think I will could. come in just for that. That'd be amazing. So, Ed. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you, sir. Yeah, it's been a good. busy week. Started a busy new job week. and yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so it's been busy. Up in London, traveling, literally got home about... 30 minutes ago. Uh, I, I'm intrigued to hear more about the new job. Like, can you obviously tell us only what you can uh, so tell us right. It's like up in Old Street in London. Um, and very nice? It is very nice, yeah. Um, very nice offices. Is that a full-time job or is that, that a, a full-time contract? Time, full-time gig. Whoa. Yeah, I know. I'm back in the full-time Back game. in the rat race. I so are you planning on moving up to London any <clears> time? Or? Uh, well, you see, this is the trouble. I'm kind of like, me and my mates are thinking about getting a place in Tunbridge. So it's kind of like near the station, which wouldn't be yeah. too bad because it it's not too bad going like traveling up to Cannon Street and then I just walk from there. Yep. So the London Good stuff. Life, well done with that stuff. Yeah, definitely, man. How are you finding the adjustment back to full time? Um, it's weird. It's nice <laughs> uh, because like you've got people around again, and it's nice. You know, and you get other people and their different experiences and how they do things and stuff. So, uh, has anyone got anything? Uh, anything dev worthy? Any hot picks that they wanted to uh, to bring into the show today or? Just sorry, just a quick question, Michael. Yeah, and go for it. You got some nice love hearts behind your head. What are they? Oh, I have, haven't I? Oh, I know. oh wow, uh, good catch, sir. Good catch. That's that's bunting. I'm in the baby room. I've bunting. lost my study. Oh, so um, yeah, that's that's what they are. There you go. That's cute. Thanks, man. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've got like uh, three weeks left. Oh, amazing. Ooh. So basically, baby could come from any time now. Basically, so. Will you yeah. be uh, having a, a, a boo session to wet the, the baby's head? <laughs> um, I hadn't really thought about that. Uh, it's sure, tradition, isn't it? Uh, is it? I, I think, think it was about so. 100 years ago. Yeah, mate, <laughs> mine had a, yeah, had a kid about a year ago, and he got drunk a couple of weeks after, and apparently it was because of wetting the, the kid's head. So, yeah. I don't so know what that's saying. That saying just sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, it does sound a bit, yeah. Sounds very well. Yeah. Um, well, the sure, kid doesn't not? come. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, any, uh, sorry, I wrote back onto babies. Um, hot picks, anyone? I've got some I, pretty oh, deaf ones. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, go for it. Okay. 
So real, real quick, just cool things that I've been playing with and quite like. Um, new Favicon generator, which I tweeted, which I think you guys have probably seen any already, but I really like it because it's quite comprehensive and it's super simple, makes it really quick. Just um, uh, You chuck in an image at 260 by 260 and then it just exports like every version you could ever want and it gives you even gives you a little bit of a code just to chuck in. Address for that is realfavicongenerator.net. That's quite fun. And then just been using, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have used uh, or looked at snazzymaps.com before. It's just quite a fun little um, site where people have done different skins for Google Maps. Oh, and wow. um, I found it quite useful in terms of design, just, you know, looking at different things you can do. Um, and I definitely think that this is a nice little, just one of those nice little finishing touches you can do instead of having oh, cool. just, a, yeah, really yeah, just cool. a standard Google Map deployment. Instead of doing that, just, you know, theme it a bit and um, bring it in line with brand colors and stuff. So I've only... <clears throat> I've only done it in like one one or two designs so far, kind of, you know, suggesting that we do use this. The only other thing I think was something Fraser showed me, which you may have already flagged, which was um zerp.com and the the um the ink bootstrap for responsive HTML emails. Have you guys oh, talked yes. about that? Hey, tell me more. Um if you go to zerp.com forward slash ink, um you can download like basically like a, a bootstrap for um responsive html emails and um we actually we've used it in-house and we've also recommended it to clients who've got their own kind of um you know html code monkeys in um in-house as well that they can use and it's been really cool and um i think fraser you were using like um you're using it to test as well weren't you no i was using something called put smell to do the testing Um, testing, yeah put smell is absolutely fantastic Um, yeah that's what stefan was saying yesterday that that was down actually it's it's kind of like you chuck in let's have a look you chuck in your html for an html email and uh and yeah say where you want to send it to so you can send it to a gmail and a hotmail and a a yahoo mail and an outlook client and wherever you want to send it and it's just a really nice easy way of, of sending and testing emails you think the emails you know it'll be the same but no it's as bad as the browsers <laughs> quick, i love this quickly respond uh, quick responsive html emails that work on any device and client even outlook even outlook wow <laughs> i know to Thank be honest you. i don't get a lot of issue with outlook i find gmail's the the big pain in the ass for gmail, html emails i agree outlook i have issues with i was just gonna really? say when i realized my microphone's on mute but uh yeah, I, Outlook, it, you know when you, you can either set obviously plain text or HTML email, and then you've yep. got one that, that will decipher whether the client can pick up HTML emails or not, and it yep. can fall back to play. I find with Outlook that if you set it for that one, it just doesn't work. And in fact, I think quite a lot of other people, because I see it on Stack Overflow, and I think it's something to do with like the, um, like the virus software. Right. I, I, there's a certain virus software package that just screws up your emails or something, but. Really? I don't know if you guys what had that problem before. Or just me, just you, yeah. Mm. Uh, have any of us, or was that your your lot? That's my lot. That's my oh, contribution. Thank you very much. Um, contribution. I'll be my usual self, and I'm just going to uh, tout something that I've not actually used. Um, Why do you bring up hot picks if you don't have your own <laughs> hot picks? Because I looked at this the other day and I thought this is awesome, and I and you never used I... it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but no. uh, if you're working. Uh, without a framework and you wanted to use uh, an ORM, uh, redbeanphp.com. Anyone use that? Um, no. I haven't actually. No, I mean, I have heard, heard of, of it. There, there's a couple, um, like Propel yeah. and Doctrine is another. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, I, yeah, I saw all those, but Redbean came like top of the list on like a Stack Overflow. I was, I was thinking, out. was this going to be one of those lists that you had this top, like. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, basically, because we want to build like a. We want to build a wrapper um, around PDO, but we, you know, obviously thought, well, if there's something out there that's better, then we just use that instead. Uh, you know, no point uh, reinventing the wheel. So, uh, pretty much all I had to be, to be honest with you. Anyone else? Um, I have one. I don't know you. So I'm in the terminal quite a lot uh, on the Mac, and there's a new version of iTerm out. Now, right. I am. I used to use iTerm quite a bit, <laughs> and then I came off it and just started using the bog standard Mac version. But then now back at this, uh, working in this company, back into iTerm, clipboard's amazing. Like you have preset configurations. It works with Tmux integration out of the box, which is quite cool. So you've got this parallel. It's like screen, but better. Um, and yeah, I definitely recommend just use, just replace, just, you just replace using terminal with this. 
and you'll soon pick up like a couple of cool things you're like oh cool i'll use that you know and yeah it's really good great right drop in replacement but just better awesome. like and michael's on mute on silent has he done so? he's <laughs> always on silent shocking i did have one other thing that i was going to uh mention um which isn't a plug-in or anything but and you might never ever need it in your life but um i had a bit of an issue today where i'd like a uh, what do you call it a, a mutual recursive issue and one of the ways is I was what is a mutual recursive issue okay so i see when i've got this right but i think i have from like my uh debugging today uh basically i had uh i think i told you before about this code base i'm working on where we've got a lot of dependency issues and and I wanted to bring in some sort of dependency injection and clean it all up. But obviously, as you guys will know, refactoring on something like a huge code base can be a bit of a nightmare. But what, what, what uh, DIs did you look at? Um, well, the main one that I looked at, which I kind of uh, talked to you guys about the other week, was Pimple. And I did want to look at that. And but retrofitting into that into our, our base would have been a bit of a nightmare, I think. Probably people screaming out thinking, no, it would have been fine. But... In the end, I decided, like you said, I just went for a simple kind of custom key value pair system just to say, look, has this class been instantiated? If it has, uh, you know, re- return the existing one. It hasn't, then create a new instance of it and return that. So that's what I've just done my own custom one. And it, it worked really well, actually. It was going really well until I came up with this issue where I had this situation where basically you've got class A and you've got class B. And class A in its constructor instantiated. And he's gone. In its class B. Yeah, I've lost. And cl- oh. <laughs> this episode. Um, actually, there was one. There was one cool thing actually I found uh, today. Uh, DigitalOcean, our good old Digital, they've got a London region now. London one, yeah, I saw that. Oh, that's pretty cool. So now okay. we can actually have it. Just yeah. So they're literally taking over like the whole server kind of virtual space. It is, it is it's awesome. scary. And again, like I've I've been using it now. What probably since the beginning of the year. I think you're using it as well, Fraser. Um, yeah. I, I know yeah. that, uh, Lewis and Mickey is too. And like Lewis is yeah yeah. And I'm like five dollars a month for like the dz <laughs> awesome. small instance i haven't had any problems you can upgrade it if you want um yeah, yeah even for just side projects even for you i mean your own personal stuff it's just great like yeah just have that and then they've got great virtual images um uh, like images that you can image you know library well image library that you can use and stuff and yeah. you can import from so yeah i definitely recommend that um I mean, there's other ones out there, Memset, uh, you know, like Rackspace, uh, uh, Amazon. Amazon, actually, they've got a new ver- new kind of tier because they're trying to compete now with DigitalOcean. can't remember what the name is, but they're doing like a whole credit system, which seems quite cool. But it's nice to have competition in this space where you're going to get, really, we're going to benefit with having like the yeah. cheapest thing out of there. So no, absolutely, kind of cool. Yeah. Cause, yeah, um, we were talking about it in the office today as well. Like we've had an issue with one of the guys who's working on a project where he needs to do HTML to PDF conversion. And he's found this really good converter, but to get it installed on the, on the dev servers that we've got, it would mean kind of upgrading the servers and upgrading the PHP version and all this kind of stuff. And obviously with a hundred or 50 or however many dev sites we've got on those servers, it's a bit kind of impractical just to willy nilly say, okay, we'll update the server to, to whatever it needs to be, inevitably everything's going to break on that dev server. So we were thinking, well, why don't we just chuck it on on DigitalOcean? Like we didn't do it, but it was just, yeah, it was well, like a viable it. I option. I mean, it's one of those crazy things, isn't it? Where because I mean, I don't know if you've had a look at because when we had Taylor Otwell on, like you know, we're talking about Forge, Laravel Forge, okay, and that kind of. I mean, the barrier to entry there is even better because what you do is you just have your digital instance. I mean, it was talking about this where freelance developers who do have just DigitalOcean instances per user because $5, you know, why not? You know I mean? Yep. They're going to pay for it or you're going to pay for, you know, I mean, it's just great to have that kind of isolated instance. So what they do is they use um, Forge and then able to like kind of set up all these servers just like automatically pretty much quickly set them up, all have the same stuff, push the code base yep. live and then get away from it. And, I think it's great. I think, you know, like that kind of, it's, it's always nice thinking you have this one box that then you can, you know, use the same versions for. But like you say, you're going to get this issue where some one day you're going to, well, you're going to work on a project and then a year later you're going to have another project, but you're using the same version of PHP, but you're too scared to change the version of PHP. Or maybe you don't have a compatibility, you know, you can't yeah. compatibly do it. So having this idea of virtualizing you'll have in your own instances may seem like overkill, but sometimes it's actually probably easier in the long run. Yeah. And we have not got Mickey still. Yeah, we have. Oh, we, oh, have. we have. Sorry about that, chaps. Don't know. Should well, we, I'll tell you what, should Bye. we go into the Q&A? I think we yes. should. Is, is this the one from the emails that we've had? Yeah. So okay. really nicely from people. People have actually sent us emails. 
Uh, and they've also commented on the blog uh, on our website. So thank you I so like much. I like it when people and do that. I know. So yeah. yeah, please, people, if you have questions, please, and we'll answer them on the show or we'll answer them, you know, just as best we can or hopefully other people like in the community can ask uh, answer them. So our yeah. first one was actually from, um, who was it from? It was from Sean. And Sean actually had a good one. He said, I heard Chris on uh, Shop Talk speak about the web, uh, this website. It's really good for people starting to web design. There's a link to this website. And I'll put it in the show notes. And I thought it was a really nice, it's kind of like, I mean, it's very similar to what um kind of css tricks was you know and is but i thought it was very nice and it was nice for him to send it into us you know so it's got stuff like you know how how keyframes work and they're small chunk sizes like you know duration wise uh you know so six minutes you know kind of thing so i thought that was quite a cool thing just looking now no oh, hold on. Yeah. yeah oh wow yeah yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, I mean, it's a nice, simple design, and then it's nice, sim- and I've looked through some, and they're very nice, like, they're very simple kind of introductions, but they kind of give you the uh, the feel and idea, like, well, what the first one here is a bouncing ball, but using just CSS, and to be honest, my CSS skills, I, they the CSS is just, in the last couple of years, just gone in, in another direction, it's just too crazy now. Probably should alert people to the fact that when you open up that site, a video it's got starts video playing. on it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Free promotion yeah. performance. But yeah, that is a nice site. Very nice. Yep. Um, and so then he also writes, says, I'm a graphic designer from South Africa, and I stumbled upon your awesome podcast. I have started learning web development, self-teaching, and I find your podcast very motivating and educational. I just have one question on PHP. My apologies if I do not have it all correct, but as my sequels get it, um, is starting to get replaced with MySQLi or PDO, what would be the best one to learn, PDO or MySQLi? And um, I know that Lou actually replied to him, but I thought it'd be quite a good question to talk about um on the yeah. podcast because there is this transition and and i think five five i'm sure five five it's been removed or it's li- at least been deprecated um let me have a look see but yes yeah, so my personal opinion i mean so, so the, the difference between the two are so my sequel um the driver itself uh the reason why um it's been deprecated really was because it wasn't the best way uh it would ge- yeah, so this is it. So the original MySQL extension is now deprecated and will gen- generate e deprecated errors when connecting to the database. And then obviously, this is insane. Instead, use P- MySQL I or the PDO MySQL extension. Um, so I think kind of what you can do is MySQL, yeah, so the MySQL extension was removed because people, it's not that it was bad, it's the fact that people were using it in the wrong way. Uh, it promoted kind of bad habits of not escaping strings. Um, and I think there was a couple of errors with, uh, like the escape string, real escape string, or the normal escape string. One of them with Unicode. yeah, because it was the escape string, wasn't it? And then they had to replace it with the real, real escape, escape string, string because and they didn't do it right the first time, or, or something on those lines. Yeah. So what uh, you've got the MySQL I and MySQL I. There's added. It's added a couple of other things. You can do batch. I think you can do batch MySQL uh, batch queries now, which is quite cool in there. But it's really kind of like a like for like, in my opinion. Uh, PDO is where you want to go. Uh, it's PHP document uh, database objects, I think it stands for. And in essence, what it is, is it allows you to, oh, yeah, oh, sorry, PHP data objects, it's called. And it allows you and essentially to use the same kind of interface, but with different drivers, in quotes, where you've got like Postgres, MySQL, and stuff like that. Um, so it will give you that flexibility of maybe one day to be able to replace it using something else. But PDO is great for that. It also has sanitization. And honestly, I think PDO, with the amount of drivers now, I'm looking at the drivers as it's got for it it will stop you then having to learn another you know set of functions or something and it's all oo based i think it's the best way to go so with that question i definitely would recommend you uh, t- choosing pdo over my sql i if you can what yeah, about your I, guys thoughts yeah I, I would go along with that and uh i guess i, I started using pdo a while ago and for no other reason really than it, it seemed to be the one that the majority was going with and you know if Although it doesn't sound like it's always the best answer, but I will j- tend to go where the crowd is going. And uh, I mean, and and like you say, I mean, it's pretty easy to pick up. It's a bit foreign, like if uh, if you haven't used it before, if you're not familiar with OO. But um, it's pretty simple. The only thing I would point out is obviously just because you're PDO using PDO doesn't mean your queries are instantly safe. That is a very uh, good point. Y- you still need to bind your parameters yeah, in the prepare right way. Prepare your statements. Yeah. Prepare your statements. Just prepare. Yeah, because you can just yeah. feed them in and kind of... Yeah, you just do it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still, yeah. it's still like, dangerous, yeah, but yeah, it's... Do an and I've seen that done, actually. Yeah. I've seen people doing that. And, so, people do, uh, and, and that's yeah. a very good point, because, yeah, you would think, oh, it's, it's doing it itself. And I think that's the kind of problem, because while we're dealing with, like, RMs and stuff, they kind of hide all that for us, which is really great. Yeah, yeah. But if you're going to start using... Because I found over the last couple of years, RMs are great, 
but also using raw SQL sometimes actually gets the you know what the point across better than this massive generated yeah. kind of RM thing. And you yeah. do have to remember that yes, you have to bind your parameters and yeah. That's I it. think the the first thing you're pretty experienced is obviously when you're using kind of MySQL, MySQL functions, you're, you're used to getting pretty descriptive error messages back or as good as you're going to get. But with PDO, it's a little bit more tricky and, and certain things you'll, you'll get thrown exceptions. So don't be careful with that. Certainly when you're creating your connection, if you get that wrong, you're going to get an exception coming back at you. Um, so yeah, and I think you've got some nice methods there, like you've got uh is it error info, camel case, yeah. nice method to bring but you'll find a lot of stuff you're just gonna get numbers saying you've got this error, zero zero one zero or whatever. And you're, we're just but, a Google. Do a Google, yeah, Google and it, everyone's and gonna be like, What is this error? Yeah. But I go with Ed, yeah, PDO all the way. And you uh Fraser? Absolutely, yeah. Um just the same reason as Michael, I started using that just because it was the way the crowds were going and I knew it was kind of bad practice using the standard, the standard MySQL. Um, yeah, follow the crowds and yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I mean, yeah, exactly. If it's, if it's the thing to Not do, a lot yeah, to say, yeah. To do. Uh, so yeah, the next great question though. That's yeah, thanks absolutely. Lot, Thank you yeah. a lot, Sean. Uh, so the next one's from Robert and he says, hi, my name's Robert. I'm 24 years old and I'm a big fan of your podcast. In fact, I've listened to all of them and some more than twice don't judge me i'm not going to judge you that's awesome <laughs> we salute that anyway i'm contacting you guys because i need help with some advice i am based in luton have been developing with php and mysql for about a year and i want to take it further by finding a full-time job but i don't know where to start as i don't have a portfolio as i struggle to find freelance work or even the confidence but i'm good enough i practice every day read a lot of blogs and listen to your podcast do you guys have any advice you can pass me to land that first job I don't mind about the pay at the moment as I love writing and learning code. Thanks. And I think that actually for both developers and designers, I think that's a great question to kind of yeah. pitch. I think yeah. it's a shame that this isn't here for, for to answer this. He did a podcast separately on, on this very thing, didn't he? Basically, when he wanted to get into web development, he didn't have a portfolio and he didn't have, he's kind of self-taught himself up to, up to a certain level. And essentially, he just took a punt and he started firing out applications and applications and applications. And eventually... Fair enough, he got a load of rejects, a load of rejections back, but he got an interview and subsequently got a job, and that was his first thing on the ladder. And it's, I think that's what you need to do. You're absolutely doing the right thing. You've obviously got a passion for it because you're listening to podcasts and you're yourself teaching yourself, self teaching yourself, you're teaching yourself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, I, I, I honestly say, I've said this to a few people before as well, like if you've got the, the motivation, to stop firing out application after application after application apply to absolutely anything you can get your hands on because there's there are a shortage of web developers out there and there are a number of companies that i I work for one that that are more than happy to to take cvs from anyone and have a look and 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 if you can prove that you're willing to learn and you're hard working then that by far overrides any kind of a portfolio if you want to get your first your foot in the door and get your first rung on the ladder so yeah just start firing out applications and eventually something will come in and yeah, you'll you'll get something. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think I'd say just um, with regard to you mentioned confidence and sometimes having a lack of it. Um, I'd definitely say you know people employers will often employ you because of who you are and because they know that you'll work well with the team, um, not necessarily because of you've got all the skills and you walk through the door. So um, I think that's something to bear in mind. Like you know, you don't have to be able to answer every question or do the test perfectly or something like that. And I think, like Fraser said, the fact that you're um, you know listening to the podcast and doing all that stuff is really commendable um, and shows how how keen you are. But the, the other thing to remember is, and I think a lot of us can relate to this experience. Like um, you only need to get that first step on the ladder once. Like it's a horrible time yeah. to, it can be a horrible time and a horrible step to take but once you've done it like you've done it you never have to do it again and you've got that kind of base bit of experience that base bit of skills and then you can just build and build on it um and it's, it's one of those things you know um I don't know, that, that's my two pennies no i think it's great man i think they were two brilliant answers and i i mean i've already told my life story to you uh to you guys for on the podcast so i'm not gonna go for it again but you know, I wouldn't sugarcoat it. Like if you're, if you're a junior and you're going to get your first job, it's going to be hard. But you're, if you're the same as me, you'll find that you might have spent two, three years learning it in your spare time. And I promise you, you'll probably learn more in your first week in a commercial position than you did in those three years because you'll be working around people who do this day in, day out. 
And and most of those people you work with are going to be happy to give up their spare time and help you learn stuff. So just go for it. And like I say, I don't know, obviously, your financial situation, but I, I like when I got into it, I took a huge pay cut. But you know what? I was poor and loving what I did as opposed to being okay financially and, and hating my life. So no, that's do a great it. thing, man. Absolutely. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah. I suppose that that yeah. I suppose that leads on, you know, from that kind of determined, you know, to get the job, kind of what he can do to help him get that job. You know, like I always think yeah. like work can make you different and stuff, and and the passion is there. I can in the email you can you know the fact that he sent us an email and stuff, and I think staying up to date with all the stuff, looking on Hacker News, Reddit, you know, PHP, looking at the new versions of what's going on in PHP, what's going on in MySQL, what's going on just in the whole web game and stuff, because. Uh, you know that allows you then in the interview setting to talk about this stuff you know so they know that you know the latest thing you know you're not just reading it from a book that's been stale for 10 years you've really keeping you know up to date and stuff you know the names of you know people and stuff that you know like oh you know have you spoke you know read that new article from blah 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 or something um and you know you because he mentions you know uh freelance you know he's been a freelance work he struggles for freelance work and all to, to build up his portfolio i would honestly say don't worry about actually having a client be your own client. Mm. Say, I want to build this, you know, and yeah. using GitHub, uh, you know, just set, setting up a simple, you know, I mean, if you can set up a DigitalOcean instance, you know, play around with that and stuff, that's another great thing. And putting it out online and just seeing how it goes and stuff, because no code's perfect, but they, uh, I know that um, employers would love to see a GitHub repo with a yeah. lot of activity that you've done. Um whether it's on your own or with friends, but, you know, even if it's on your own, just you, you know, being able to see the commits and stuff because they're able then to see your kind of the way you work. Um, it's quite interesting because obviously with Git, you can then work out and you can see the history of how that you've changed it and stuff. So, you know, really your code will then speak for itself in a sense. You'll be able, you know, you won't have, because I think today, it, I'm sure I have to talk to you, Justin, about this with the design stage. You know, they can't see yeah. a, uh, anything through just a CV. It's like, you know not really you know they need to i mean yeah. definitely with design you need to see something it's like that's Absolutely. really the selling point and i think that's kind of what is so great about this industry is the barrier to entry is low enough yeah. that you as long as you if you want to do it you can do it and that's awesome and um I, I say you know put releasing code um and blogging uh yeah. just blog 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 because that's again something they know you're interested in it they know that you care um and it's something that they can read and understand before they even for the first first interview with you uh they'll get yeah. this picture of who you are and i think that really definitely would help i think also like yeah. don't wait for uh the job to come up uh, just email companies because oh, yeah. the end of the day, and, and say and this is it when you have your own website where you'll be doing stuff look here's my yeah. github profile here's my twitter account uh you know and stuff like that. and on your twitter account you know i'm sure if you're yeah. talking with friends or something you know you know, like all oh, about the latest kind of you know news articles or new PHP yeah. stuff, and they'll yeah, absolutely be per potentially. Yeah, uh, you're going to save that company what five grand recruitment costs. So they're going to love you for yeah. that. Hey, and, hey, that's a good point. We've got one guy at our place who literally wrote and said, "Look, I work a month for free." He was that that determined to get into the industry. Okay, we didn't do that because that'd be slavery. But, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you put the coat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what a great attitude, you know that. He's not going to be interested in that guy who's that determined. So yeah, that'd be my tip anyway. Man. Yeah. I, I just one other thing I'd add to that, which kind of follows on from what Ed was saying, is um, it's it's when you're sitting on the other side of the fence, when you're maybe you're looking to get into the industry, but you're not there yet. Ev you you immediately naturally think everyone's better than you. Um, yeah. And the reality is that I mean, some of the people that turn up for interviews for these jobs, it's just incredible. Do you know what I mean? They've got no no portfolio no skills and no idea at all um and yet they're still getting in front of people for interviews so just turning up with anything i think employers like are grateful that you've made an effort like whatever yeah. you bring to the table and say this is what i've got to show you i think they're grateful for that because yeah. not everyone actually brings that to the table to be honest yeah you know just it, however crap you think it is just just go out there and start like ed said just build some stuff online you know get a blog do do the stuff on git and but just build a few things you know if you need to maybe see if you can make friends with a designer or something you can put a bit of front end on it and just have anything to bring to bring to the table and i think it would go down you know go down well 
absolutely and it's funny because with with stuff that's crap actually that's the best thing because what i would do then is i would actually uh you know blog about that why i why i wrote it this way and then why i changed it and that shows progression you know because again you know people i mean if someone if anyone of us either designer or developer thinks that something they they worked on you know a year ago they're like oh there's something i wouldn't want to tweak on that or something you know like there's bits you know that you kind of can see where you know that uh, in hindsight you would have wanted to change you know i think that's that's kind of the thing and and again with blogs and stuff you're able to express yourself in that way and really blogging it doesn't have to be like a fine art it really is kind of just a mind dump you can kind yeah. of just dump up what you think and you know people will you know read it and at least they can at least and i find with uh, blogging it allows you to remember stuff like you're like oh yeah i remember how to do that now and yeah so yeah definitely all those points everyone's made yeah. i definitely think those kind of definitely will help yeah, yeah. And keep, only... this, and keep listening to the podcast. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Absolutely. Your friends. My only kind of like warning was going to be, and I've seen this again, is uh, people coming into interviews and saying they know this, that, and this, and actually they don't. And yeah, just don't, be, don't ever do that. Be yeah, honest. Be point. honest. Be deadly honest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah because exactly. that's the thing. Because again, as, as uh, you know, Justin, you're saying, you know, it's about the person as well. If you're going to lie in that first five minutes yeah. or so, how be honest yeah. how, how can the employee like employer you know really ju- you know kind of take you seriously you know it's if you're honest about it look, i don't know that but i'll learn it and that's that's kind of my thing is like if i don't know something that I, in even in an interview i'm just like well i'm going to learn that when i get back then because yeah. that's just the way i am yeah. and, you know that's the way kind of we are you know as like a profession it's that learning kind of wanting to just always learn 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 yeah yeah completely agree so um i've got another question from tyler yeah. Uh, and I'm still a bit w- uh, wishy-washy on how to get front-end frameworks working with my back-end seamlessly. I don't know if that's a question that's big enough for a podcast or uh, or if it, if you can do a podcast on JSON or something. But do you have any idea where I could look and get answers on that? And I actually thought that was quite an interesting one there, that first bit, because I'm, the thing that uh, go, immediately comes to mind is uh, Phil Sturgeon's API book that he's releasing or he's released and i think he's updated enough and i'll put a show in the show notes because i definitely think that'd be a good read um and that talks about because building apis now as you say like because the front ends become so clever uh, a lot of the logic that we used to kind of constrict into just being the back end stuff has now been like well we can do that on the front end and this front end really has changed into just kind of just this you know as you say a json interface where you know json representation and you've got stuff like how do you version stuff you know because obviously you know your representation you know your format you have to deal with that you know having legacy versions and you know it's great because the idea of maybe the service or orientated architecture you know the idea that you know I have my JSON, you know, kind of web service. People deal with that. But then I have maybe a mobile application and a web application that both use that service, but they obviously use it in a different way and display the information in a different way. So I definitely recommend his. And I also put a couple of other show notes, um, another couple of links, sorry, that I found um, online and stuff that I used when I was looking in this stuff. Uh, because, you know, like the HTTP methods and stuff. Um, you know, because obviously, I suppose that's one thing, actually, is, you know, the, the, the difference, because obviously now you're not just dealing with the idea of just posting uh, forms and, you know, getting them back, uh, you know, with just get requests. You've got these old ideas of puts, deletes and stuff, which can get quite confusing. But I found that the Laravel documentation and there's a couple of Jeffrey Way things have found very simplified that to where you're at. Oh, sorry, that's not English. Have simplified it greatly uh, that allow you then to be able to kind of get, you know, through that barrier. And I'll put those in the show notes. Um, and any uh, any other thoughts that you lot can think of for uh, API, API design? I mean, it's one of those things that you have to scheme out a lot and work out what you want to put on the back end and what you want in the front end. Um, yeah. And it's still kind of new day, early days with it all because of how clever the front end's getting to how yeah. dumb you yeah. want to make the back end. And uh, yeah, I, I was going to say the exact same thing, really. That I'm I'm not really bought in to this whole idea but i think maybe that's because i'm not an, uh, enough an expert with just wait six months and mickey will just be a front end oh, developer. i'll be an evangelist i know this for... yeah he'll be an evangelist for yeah, ember js all and all of them yeah I, I guess for me my biggest argument and people will correct me on this but is just the whole debugging side of things i just find the more i do on the back end the, the easier it is to manage yeah. but that's probably because i don't have the right tools and i don't have the know how i think but... i think the thing is i think it makes it makes the back end development so much easier because obviously then what mm. you're dealing with 
is really kind of these separate you know architecture services that then you can unit test easily integrate tests with you yeah know, respond with yeah. just to just dump in json really uh yes. and then obviously it's the front end though because it's getting clever and now you need to unit test and framework that and that's where mocha and all jasmine and all these other frameworks for the front yeah. end come in um and i say yeah so it's it's a learning curve for the front end and it's more kind of specifying exactly what we want from the back end which i kind of like i like the idea that you know the back end deals with just giving you the data yeah it's how to you i mean it's the same thing as kind of what css is to um you know html and stuff you know it's the idea that i'm going to give you html which is the data but your css is going to be the view the presentation of what you want this to be uh you know view and it's almost like view and data shouldn't really be together it's a separation of concerns really where the view should be kind of separate from the data because then you're able to reuse it quite a bit yeah obviously with xml i mean i mention json all the time xml obviously (laughs) duh um <laughs> anything else anyone else got any bits on that before i move on to his next bit no, no all, good. all good all good okay <laughs> so then he's gone um i'd really like you uh, to get your opinion on this issue i know php to have wrangled an ancient build of zencart and i'm sure we all remember zencart and have to uh, hmm. have coded some drupal modules for clients in the past but not enough of it is um not enough of it to make my own minified cms with my own design standards and break free of that bulky beast which is something I definitely want to do as I can't stand being shackled to something bulky in the cases when I only need part of a CMS like a cart or a blog. If you guys have any experience with developing a CMS, how big an an endeavor is it? Your opinions on CMSs in general and various systems that are out there, the pros and cons of them, and if they're even needed at all, I'd love to listen in on an episode about that. Uh, And so um, as someone who is not uh, great with the back end i find myself relying on them far too much and accomplish basic actions it would probably be far less work if i knew more about php and my sequel and like i didn't have to uh, and i'd like if i didn't have to retheme an entire drupal installation every time i need to make a store is it appropriate to use a cms in that instance or not and i think this is quite an interesting topic because it it obviously kind of with drupal it then brings up joomla it then brings up wordpress that then brings up making your own bespoke software and i yeah. thought with all of us it'd be quite cool to talk about um so mickey would you like to start off okay proceedings? so what is your opinion so the first thing and again we talk about this a lot in the podcast and it's this whole idea of how much you need to know under the hood how important is that and i'm not going to go through that topic because we have kind of hammered it but the other thing i would say is from personal experience i did build my own cms and the only thing i would say is it depends on your personality if you have quite an addictive personality and you've you've got that kind of eye for detail and you love everything to be perfect then it could become a bit of a nightmare for you because i it took me about a year to build mine and i still hate it so just be <laughs> be aware of that and I definitely think it's an important learning curve to understand how to do it. But I think probably at the end of it, you'll probably think actually in the future, I'm going to use something else because so you don't day, have to do that code base. So you don't yeah, have to feel that pain. Exactly. Yeah. But, but I suppose a uh, one question I was got you, did you, I mean, what was your, why did you make a CMS in your, was it because of those reasons or was it because it was a kind of, I only need this niche kind of product and I want to learn myself or. Um, I think at the time, like, there was quite a lot of bespoke requirements from the client that I, I didn't think there was anything out there off the shelf that was going to fit what I needed. And also at the so time... You couldn't, you couldn't bend WordPress. And I suppose this is where yeah. it gets to the problem, isn't it? Where you can bend things certain yeah. ways to be like, oh, I can kind of do it. And Yeah, exactly. And I think in my mind, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll do this in a week. And obviously, and I probably could. But, you know, then you start thinking, oh, actually, I hate that. I'll do that again. I'll do this. And that's what I mean when your personality comes into it. It's how so complex do, you want to get it, isn't it? As well, exactly, I think he was telling, exactly. you know, he was saying about that, and and we'll talk about yeah. that in a minute. But so, Justin, uh, the designer side would be quite interesting because obviously you don't. Yeah. I mean, you. I mean, obviously, I mean, you care about the back end enough to, you know, for it to actually present the front end. But are you, you know, do you like the idea of bespoke or do you like the off the shelf kind of solution? So really, it's. I think it's a great question. Um, and actually, funnily enough, it's, it ties in with what you were talking to Chris Jury about the week, I think. It's, um, he, he briefly touched on it as well when talking about bootstrap and, you know, whether that's a good thing that these things are out there for people because it just, you know, it takes, it takes the, you know, effort out of it. You can just start, just chuck bootstrap in, you know, and then things start to look generic. But, um, I think, I think from my personal opinion, just based on what I've worked on my experience, I love, 
I love the flexibility, knowing that there's there's a potential for a bespoke system behind what I'm doing, um, and it just means there's more flexibility. You're not you don't feel like you're tied down because all you're tied down by is just going to the developer and going, "Can we do this?" And they go, "Yeah, I think so." Do you know what I mean? As opposed to can you thinking, work oh, and strict? Can yeah, you work yeah. Rest, yeah. Yeah, or don't know, I've got this, this plug into it. And, you know, I played around with WordPress a bit and I just, I just don't like it at all. Um, I know it's got its uses, but I, I really, I really, um, I like bespoke and, um, I don't know. That's, I that's kind of my designer, that does, I mean, that, that's probably the greatest thing for you, isn't it? Because then you are open to, you haven't got the restrictions of, say, a WordPress looking at WordPress and being like, this is what your theme pretty much we use, reskin this theme or something into some other design, you know, because that's our fixed yeah. layout of what we can. With bespoke, you get that kind of, you know, and I'm sure you can do it with WordPress. But again, I think it then moves into the whole idea. I mean, in your freelance stuff, do you use WordPress or have you used Joomla or any, any other, the, or any of your own bespoke one, maybe? The, no, I'm lucky enough to be able to do my own bespoke one. I mean, the only thing I've used is WordPress, and then I, I keep coming back to it because that's what I'm familiar with. Yep. So um, I've come back to that, even though I've always had Drupal up that I want to try and just look into and stuff like that. But um, it is interesting because the, the flip side of, um, you know, me saying, oh, I like bespoke and that kind of thing is, there have been instances where you deploy something, you're working with an open source framework, and maybe you've either it's the designer who's forgotten to say, oh, by the way, this is what a, um, uh, a validation message looks like, or, or this is what uh, an active set looks like a button, or something like that. You may have gotten there, or the project is really much or something. Back with an open source framework, and you go, oh, someone's already thought about that, and actually, you know this. You've when, got that back. You've got that kind of support you've got already. That, yeah, you know, you've got that base. And maybe, exactly. Maybe that takes less pressure off the developer. I don't know. Like you know, oh, I forgot to do a four or four page. Oh, it doesn't matter because we use an open source framework. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like there are swings and roundabouts to it. That is a very good point. I mean, that's one thing with Bootstrap. The idea that you know the alerts already styled up that look nice exactly. you've got the javascript and stuff and it, as you say like it's those little things where normally typically in a design you get from a designer they haven't included or you need yeah. to you know and, and because they're kind of well it's you know to do with the theme of the site and icon icon sets i find is another one you know where obviously yeah. you know like bootstrap provide you with all these icons but like you say it, it is nice to have like your own clean css without having the top bit just bit you know it's bootstrap if it's bootstrap do you know what i mean like yeah. and you know certain bits of it the traits of it so but yeah i think it's a good i think it's a good thing well personally because obviously i'm a developer so i think it's a good thing because it allows me to kind of use cool stuff in css without you know having to be a designer um but yeah. I can definitely understand, and, and I think it's probably it, it's the same thing, isn't it? Where a designer Absolutely. with Bootstrap feel probably the same way as we do with WordPress, where we now think we're designers because we can just like have a Bootstrap file. I mean, that's fine, and exactly. Then, and then with WordPress, it's like, well, now I do the back end. I think actually it's quite funny yeah. now. We actually probably got two of the same. I think you can get the same feeling from both parties. Where totally. if I if I say, oh, it's Bootstrap, in it, you know, you say it's Word, I think you're going to get the same feeling. So I think maybe it's kind of a good thing for we both got the same hate for two different things that's um, it how about you fraser that's it uh i decided to say, yeah because i guess we've we've all yeah can you can you hear me Am I, I can indeed yeah right perfect yeah because we've we've all worked on on cms systems together and, and and what have you and one of the comments that he made was he knows a bit of php and a bit of mysql but he doesn't know enough to to build a cms and i i, I don't think that's the case at all like if you know any php and if you know any any uh mysql then you've got the perfect footing to to start building a cms because a cms doesn't have to be wordpress you don't have that's to really redevelop good wordpress yeah, you, you don't, don't have to redevelop whatever the other ones are that I can't quite think of on the top of my head at the moment. But it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, a CMS in, in its completely basic elements is if you can write to a database, if you can read from a database, and if you can update a record in a database, you've got everything you need to be able to, to, to start writing a CMS and to, to get a CMS. So if you want to build something simple that you can kind of give to a client just so they've got three pages or well, it doesn't matter how many pages because I guess you're going to, they can have as many as they want, but just so they can modify text or they can maybe not upload an image or, or whatever because that's like, that's when things start getting a bit more complicated, but you've got the perfect foundation to, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, and in terms of, do you need to use a custom CMS or do you need to use a, an off the shelf CMS? Um, 
that all comes down to again to personal preference. Like if if you if you start making a, a CMS that you think is or that that ticks every box that you and your client needs, then absolutely use your own. Um, personally, I I use off the shelf CMSs. I use Silver Stripe as, as my main thing for my for my freelance work, just because it's 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 a fully comprehensive cms and it does everything that i need a cms to do and it's it's customizable to some degree um but it ticks every box i need and it i didn't have to spend ten thousand hours developing it like the the, the developers of, of silver strike did so if i wanted something dead simple i could yeah happily knock something up in a day or a couple of days just to to fulfill a very basic need but yeah i kind of i, I tend to just reach for for something that's already been developed and and, and go from there yeah i i I completely agree with everything that you've just said, but, uh, I would say like if you're building CMS and you, it's working towards something that you're doing for like freelance and it's actual financial benefit to it. Just if you are going to build it yourself, just literally write down a paper what it needs to do, not what all yep. the amazing. Yes, Michael. Bells yeah. And whistles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, that's the trap I fell into, but just write down what it needs to do and stick to your plan and don't segue or else you will end up with stress and as much hair as I have. So, um, <laughs> don't. Just don't do it. Um, and the only thing I was going to say is I know what you're talking about with the code blow of uh, something else, <laughs> but if you, if you start building something yourself, <laughs> um, if you start building something yourself, you'll suddenly find actually it wasn't as bloated as what you thought it was. And actually you'll start thinking, actually, and now I need that f- functionality. And now I need that functionality. You'll start adding it all in again yourself anyway. So don't, I mean, don't feel too bad about I mean, the bloat. I, I've yeah. built a couple of CMSs. My last one was very working with you guys. Um, and yeah, it's a great... Sure, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I don't say thank you. I don't know. You're probably just slating it, but That's thank you right. for slating it. Um, and the thing is, you realize, you appreciate how much work it goes into making a, like a lot, you know, of CMS functionality, like the things we yeah. take for granted and I think users take for granted as well. Um, like permissions and yeah, all those things that kind of out the box, obviously you, you assume in WordPress and you assume in Joomla. And I think like you guys saying, write a spec of what you really need. Um, yeah. you can build in like stuff later on you know what does the client really need and and like Fraser was saying you know you know building a cms you don't have to have all the bells and whistles at the first start i mean that's the great thing about this job you know you can bring it in and you know as long as the client's happy you know if it's freelance or if it's just your own personal stuff as long as you're ha- you know happy at that time for that project that's okay you can always update it later and um you know it, there's only so many cool things you can do and i think it is nice making your own framework uh well sorry own cms because and framework we know cms in particular because you know it it really is kind of a staple of this is what my thought on this thing was you know this is what i wanted it to be this is what i felt feel it should be and this is the product that i want to sell and also it's great when a client comes to you and says something's broken well you can't blame wordpress on it and you can't blame you have to blame yourself which is great because again it's <laughs> like well you know well yeah it's like damn wordpress i should have used you uh, no. <laughs> but you know you, you know you can you then think well you hold your hands up it's like well okay it's my fault and you're going to learn something out of it and instead of going through kind of like hell of looking at other people's code that's been you know years of construction so i i would recommend uh playing around with making your own one and and kind of working out and uh, as like phrase on it you know and uh mick you know and and just you know on a per project basis working out what you want um really is what i feel probably the best solution yeah completely agree awesome um is that all our questions i think that's all our questions you know but i think it's been a good podcast i, I, think, I think really appreciate people writing in it's absolutely awesome. yeah i think it's been really interesting i think it's interesting takeaway of the bootstrap versus uh wordpress thing i think that's kind of interesting obviously when they merge we should yeah. make bootstrap wordpress yeah but keep sending us the questions <laughs> yeah so, I'd like to get some uh, relationship advice questions as well. Maybe we do one a week or something. That'd be a good relationship feature, advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> we could be like agony uncles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we yeah. could nail that. Oh, <laughs> the three devs and a movie. The agony aunt special. It's great to have uh, our co-host, our co-founder uh, Fraser back. Yes. And, uh, Thank you very, it's good to be back. Yeah, very good to, yeah. to chat chat it's shop awesome. with you because I've I've not talked web dev for, for the last two months, so it's good to, well, you're getting the to get back into it. Getting the shakes, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, withdrawals, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh as always amazing to have justin on the show so uh, absolutely thanks a lot man thanks, man. yeah thanks man and um hopefully we'll have you on again before but if not i hope everything goes well with the baby and uh Thank and, you. Uh, take and make it easy. sure that the baby listens to this yes it's soothing the baby oh the baby the baby will be on this don't you worry next podcast <laughs> oh no we're gonna have to really no that's the thing oh well we're gonna have to wait, mickey when you're yeah. baby, obviously, you know, we've got the merchandise maybe coming. Yes. We'll yeah, have oh, yeah. to send off Justin, you know, a bit of merchandise yeah. as well. 
Can we talk about merchandise yet? Uh, well, I suppose. What's this space? Well, actually, no. I suppose we yeah. can actually because by the yeah. time this, it, this this airs, yeah. like yeah. we should have t-shirts, t-shirts. and stuff. Yeah. Just if it works, yeah. then yeah, you know, you can have a t-shirt. But yes. yeah. oh dear. But awesome. anyway, listeners, I guess that is so long, and we'll see you yeah. next week. Cheers, guys. Goodbye. Bye. See ya. You've been listening to Three Devs and a Maybe. You can contact us at contact at 3 devsandamaybecom or follow us on Twitter at the number 3 devs and a maybe. <laughs>